Speaks Rebel's Edge. I'm John Nigerian. You, of course, recognize my brother Pete Nigerian uh, right next to me, coming to us from an undisclosed location. <laughs> and uh, we appreciate all of you joining us every week, uh, and we hope to make it more often than that. So, Pete, let's dive right into uh, Crypto Winter hmm. and whether or not Crypto Winter um, may be over. Because from what I'm seeing, Pete, Crypto Winter may have started to thaw rather dramatically. Uh, I saw Coinbase up double digits, up 16%. Mm -hmm. We've got Riot Blockchain. This, of course, is a miner. Mara, Marathon Digital, MicroStrategy, um, Hut 8. All of these uh, moving to the upside double digits, Pete. Yeah. I, I, you know, John, it's really interesting because we'd watch the price of, of specifically Bitcoin just go down, 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 down. Has it got the bottom? Well, we don't know the answer to that, but it certainly has had a pretty nice bounce of late. I mean, we, we needed to get back over 20,000. It got there. This morning, we were over 22,000 and we're getting there. You mentioned Riot and some of these other names. It's really interesting to see how crypto is making a pretty nice bounce. And it's not just crypto. There's also a lot of different commodities today that are in play that are pretty nice. When you look at crude, John was just trading 91. It got up over 101, 102 today. Um, it gives you a little bit of an idea, nat gas as well. So we're starting to see some of the areas of the market that you kind of expected maybe would start to move a little bit to the upside after you know a tough, tough run of it. And certainly they're getting it done right now in the crypto space. Yeah, well, um, you know, uh, uh, Ethereum, Pete, moving up to almost 1500 about 1485 and like you said the fact that bitcoin overtook 22000 again um i guess our friend alex Mascioli was right over at trade the chain when he said you know 188 was a pretty strong candle it certainly looks like it's held in there and obviously these assets that derive uh, a, a lot of their upside from uh, what crypto is doing. And if people are trading it rather than running away from it, that's certainly better for Coinbase, Mara, Hut8, you know, any of the people that are big holders of crypto, this is uh, something that they've been waiting for. So um, quite frankly, Pete, I've still got, I was not a seller, have not been a seller um, down here under 25 for Bitcoin. I've just been a buyer uh, from a thousand on up in Ethereum. I've just been a buyer. Uh, and I think we bounce from here and I think it's good for those stocks as well as, uh, of course, um, those coins that we just mentioned. Bitcoin. You know, what's really uh, a good a good sign, John, is when you get into the semiconductor space and you've got somebody out there who's in the public uh, <laughs> out there representing us and Nancy Pelosi, and suddenly you buy 20,000 shares of NVIDIA. Wow, that's kind of an interesting thing. I mean, you've got this vote going on and what you're doing with the chips mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're sitting out there buying shares. I find that pretty interesting. And I'm not just putting it on her. I'm not saying she's the only one. But yeah. boy, we sure have seen and heard a lot about a lot of these kinds of moves of late. And I'll tell you, speaking of the moves, the semiconductors that were awful in June since July 1, literally, they've turned, burned, and ripped to the upside. Whether it's NVIDIA, AMD, Marvell, you take your pick. You just take a look at what's happened in this month of July so far, and they are absolutely ripping to the upside. So uh, there's something to it. There's obviously a vote on this whole thing and everything. And uh, voila, fish and chips. They got it themselves yeah. a pretty good run. Yeah. And what Pete's talking about there, folks, in case you don't watch the news as closely as he does about semiconductors, there are subsidies um, that are going to be out there. It's not just a plant that's going to be built in Ohio. There are going to be subsidies to the chip industry to get us away from Taiwan uh, because China's eventually going to take it, it seems, Pete, mm -hmm. and uh, about supply chain issues. Um, we've even heard that maybe over in Germany, there may be car companies that are hoarding refrigerators and dishwashers and things like that just to take the chips out of those appliances. It's so amazing. the fact that Congress is looking at approving these subsidies and the fact that Paul Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi's husband, was in there aggressively buying, like Pete says, 20,000 shares of a $160 stock. So that's, nice a trade. Lot. that's a pretty significant amount of money that Mr. Pelosi just plunked down. And like Pete said, 
He's not the only one. I'm sure there are plenty of Republicans that are doing it too, but this is just something that always has smelled bad, but it's something that they just get to do because they're Congress people. They don't get taken to jail on this stuff, Pete. They just get to take it to the bank. Right. Uh, well, and, and John, the, the interesting thing is we've had this big turn in the market, right? What's turning the market? Well, we started earnings season. Earnings season starts when? When the financials decide to report. Yeah, yeah. JP Morgan, we've had Citi, we've had all these. Bank of America with an absolutely, uh, it, it was a very interesting report. They had some growth in certain areas and they talk about the interest areas and so forth. Uh, what did you think of that, John? Was it the right reaction for what they delivered for that stock to jump up towards 33 early on? Gave up a little bit. Yeah, I don't think it was the right reaction, Pete, but I, I do kind of understand it just like you do mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, we both talked about housing this morning amongst ourselves and how the sentiment for home builders is pretty bad. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that Bank America does uh, that Goldman Sachs doesn't really do um, that Wells Fargo does, obviously. Wells Fargo and Bank America, more than any other of the major banks, hmm. are big lenders yeah. um, to consumers that are buying condos and homes. And if they've cut way back, which they have, that impacts their profitability because you get deposits and you'd like to lend those deposits out to make more money on that cash that you've just got sitting in there in your deposits if you're Bank America, if you're Wells Fargo. Um, the fact that consumers are now stepping back a little bit, that's not good. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons, Pete, that you saw people uh, selling when Bank America popped up to 33 rather than running it higher. I think they were a little nervous. We had um, some nice buyers of calls last week in there too, John. I mean, it's it, very, very interesting. But yeah, the whole Bank of America story, and and I, and I think what we saw in the financials definitely stood out. I think if we jump up to Netflix, John, what in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? I mean, are these guys are they are they going to be able to get back to where they were? Do you think, as in terms of, you know, they were the king for a long time, but the king got just absolutely hammered of late. What do you think? Um, I think, Pete, uh, that since it is the most popular by far and popular by the amount of people who are on it, um, uh, I, I think the fact that uh, they haven't really addressed the sharing of passwords, which is a big deal. The fact deal. that you have so many people sharing the password, that's a big deal. They could announce something about that. But what they instead announced is that they're going to have ad supported um, content, which is the next best thing, because they need to define another way to get revenue in. And that might be one of the ways that works for them, Pete. So the fact that they're so popular means for, to me that they're hard to quit. Um, mm -hmm. The fact that people really want uh, the content that Netflix has. Is Amazon's content better? Right now, I'd say, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. I find myself watching a lot more Amazon related shows, Pete, than I do on Netflix. But if you're somebody who um, is one of those, you know, hundreds of millions of people, and I have a Netflix subscription as well, I can't blame them for maybe saying, well, let's see what they do next rather than mm -hmm. dumping it. So I that's why I think stocks up seven bucks today, because I think they're going to survive. Well, yeah. let me throw one out there to you, Pete, about um, unusual option activity. Yeah. This is thing that Pete and I are known for, folks, because we built algorithms that basically look for where our big institutional clients buying, buying, buying. If your hands are towards you when you're a trader, you're buying. So where is that buying going right now? And if you don't trade options, don't worry. Starbucks, they're buying upside calls that expire this Friday. So in other words, time frame, quick. They think mm -hmm. it's going to move by Friday. Number two, out of the money calls because the stock was 81 bucks. They're buying the 83 strike. So they're basically looking for a $2 or greater move in the short term. And that's Pete, why I bought um, Starbucks, S-B-U-X. And by the way, um, it's not just uh, the fact that we're in the summer, Pete, these guys mm -hmm. sell milkshakes. If oh you yeah. Oh. Know that, you haven't been in a Starbucks 
because that's what a lot of the young people buy anyway. I'm not even sure people buy coffee anymore. They buy all this crap with sugar all over the place. They're malts. They're all kinds of crazy things. But, you know, speaking, going back to the chips, NVIDIA, by the way, um, yeah. and we were talking about the political side of things. This one was pretty interesting today as well, John. This is a stock that I actually bought going into earnings. And everybody was like, oh, you're nuts. You shouldn't be doing that. And everybody was running for the for the hills. And <laughs> the reason I bought the stock, John, in the previous cycle was you get that high implied volatility. All that really means, folks, is those options that would be a dollar on now maybe two or three or four dollars. So they're much more volatile, which gives them much more price. So I was able to sell out of the money calls for ten dollars against that stock. Well, the stock is right back to where it was back in that era. It was 165 right before the previous earnings, almost whatever, a month and a half, two months ago now. And it's interesting because today stock's right at 165. They're buying the 170s. They bought over 10,000 of those calls. They paid approximately $2 for those calls. They expire Friday, just like what you were talking about. And we're back to that sort of a, a world again in the unusual options world because as we've returned back to this and we're seeing a lot more activity, we're also seeing very, very short term. We're seeing yeah. some that go out, but the majority of it is expires Friday, expires the next Friday, but they're not really hardly even getting out to August just yet. So interesting one. It's already made a move today. It got up to 169 and it's then pulled back a little bit, but that's why I like this one as well, John. I still think the company's actually cheap. And I think there's a little bit more upside. And I like Nancy Pelosi and her husband. I think they're, I think they're, they're a big, big part of it. <laughs> yeah. As long as Paul Pelosi's in here buying, you want to be long this name. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. If, if Paul Pelosi's buying, that means the subsidies are going up, up, up. <laughs> Keep, uh, speaking of going up and out, Home yeah. Run Derby, we talked about it a little bit last week. I got to talk a little bit also about the Yankees because they are en fuego. Um, and those of you who don't speak Spanish, that's on fire. <laughs> um, because they are. I mean, they yeah. scored like uh, 27 runs versus three runs against Boston in a two-game series leading into the All-Star break. They are yeah. just crushing it. And, yeah. you know, you look at that, you know, the the – just the sluggers they've got. You look at the oh. pitching they've got. Yep. Um, fans are going crazy. And I think this is the team to beat. Um, and I'm certainly uh, hoping that I get to get out there for a couple of games this year, Pete. Yeah, they're fun. I've got a chance to see them in person. I saw Aaron Judge. I've seen Carlos Stanton, all these guys. They're big. They're strong. They're athletic. They're amazing. And they're probably as good a baseball players as I've seen in a really long time. And given the size and the strength, it's just – it's incredible to watch them. But in terms of the home run derby, which is tonight at 8 o'clock yeah. Eastern, it's going to be pretty daggone interesting because when we look at them, John, and, and you're trying to go through these, Pete Alonzo, the guy's going for his third straight to win the home run derby. Now, the reason that's important, guys, is no one's done it. <laughs> he, right. He's got one, he's got two, and now he's going for three. And it could be a really, really fun night. I mean – for me, John, the home run derby screams summer. It's the middle of summer. We've had a great start. Now we're kicking it in, and we're right in the middle of summer, and we've got that. So it's not July 4th. It's now. It's whenever the derby is. It's always worth yeah. watching. It's always kind of fun, and I'm excited to see that as well. But you would think a lot of Yankees might be in there, but you know, a lot of people think, well, when you're going for these home run derbies, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get that. That's all a bunch of BS. Let's be honest. That's all crap. These guys, these guys are taking a little bit of a breather though. And I think alonzo has got a heck of a shot to actually make it three in a row. What do you think, Pete? Um, I know you've got your radio show on Sundays, yep. um, the huddle, the sports huddle um, up there with Maxi uh, on WCCO, which is an Odyssey uh, network. Um mm -hmm. What do you think about training camps? Because they're starting now. Yep. And there's a lot of interesting things going on, especially with the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on, John. The, the starts today is the Las Vegas Raiders, which I'm extremely excited about because Devontae Adams is got, now back with his quarterback, Derek Carr. They played in college together. I did their bowl game in Hawaii. It was phenomenal. And those guys are magic. And I think if if he were going to leave Green Bay, that's the place to go. Go back with your quarterback, your best friends. He's going to get you the rock. And I, I, I'll i tell you what, I think it's really exciting. We get to kick off this whole thing. Now, it's just the rookies today, but it's them and the Buffalo Bills. 
it's going to be a really interesting, you know, start to the season because I think with these two AFC teams, it's interesting, John. I think the Raiders are going to be a team that that if they can get out of that difficult division they're in, they've got a real good shot to get somewhere pretty far, I think, in the playoffs. Buffalo Bills have already proven they could do that. So when you look at the talent on all these teams, and it's just exciting because this time of year, I just mentioned the Derby. How about the fact that the Derby is today? We got training camp starting today. You can get on NFL Network and watch these guys running around and doing all the crazy stuff that they're doing. I mean, this is uh, this is heaven on earth for Pete Nigerian and John Nigerian folks. This is this is the time to be in sports. It's an awesome time to be watching, and it's only going to get bigger because now every all those draft picks, all those guys in free agency, all the stuff that's happened in the off season. Now we get to see what it really looks like when you put it all together. Yeah, and Pete, in coming weeks, we're going to have to talk more about maybe there's only going to be two. And by that, I mean in college football, maybe they'll only be the Big Ten and the SEC. Yep. What does that mean for betting and these name, image, and likeness, or nil, NIL? What does that yep. mean for college football, for college sports in general? We've yep. got a lot of that we've got to cover because, of course, a lot of this publicly traded stocks – that you and I talk about every day, they're the ones providing a lot of that money for oh, those yeah. same image and likeness campaigns. But yeah. Pete, great job as usual, um, folks. As well. uh, encourage you to send us some questions uh, to both our Twitter accounts, which you've seen on the show here. Uh, we hope you join us for next week's Rebel Edge. And until then, Pete, bang. Bang, giddy, giddy up. up. <laughs> we'll see you.